Welcome back, everyone, to Vox Markets. My name is Paul Hillen. By popular demand, I'm delighted again to be able to speak to CEO Alistair Smith of Avacta, a leading life sciences firm developing um, innovative new cancer therapies and powerful diagnostics. So welcome, um, Alistair. Hi, Paul. Yeah, well, a lot has been happening since um, we last spoke, not least today's excellent news that the first patient in cohort five has been dosed with AVA 6000. But before we sort of dig into the details of that, I don't suppose you could quickly remind investors of what the drug does and what the sort of key aims are of the, um, the clinical study. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, AVA 6000 is a modified form of uh, the generic drug doxorubicin. Uh, so a well-established uh, generic chemotherapy, as I say, but it's, it's limited in its use because of serious side effects, including cardiotox and uh, immunosuppression. And in AVA uh, 6000, uh, Avacta's precision chemistry is used to uh, target the release of doxorubicin predominantly in the tumor tissue. So sparing healthy tissues and improving the safety and tolerability for, for patients. So we we updated the market in January with some very positive safety data, um, up to and including cohort four in the phase 1A study. Um, and these data showed that AVA 6000 is well tolerated by, by patients, a significant reduction in the uh, toxicities being experienced. And, and importantly, we also reported uh, that doxorubicin is being released in the, uh, the tumour at levels that are required to have a a therapeutic effect. So we we showed uh, the data that sit behind those statements during the recent uh, science day. Uh, and I'm going to run through those data in uh, in detail as part of the video discussing the 3996 AACR poster in a couple of weeks and okay. really sort of explain, um, you know, in, in palatable terms uh, what those data those data mean. But going, going back to the phase 1A study then, it's a dose escalation study. It's about safety and tolerability. Mm. The, the initial design was uh, up to four cohorts, 200 mg per meter squared. Um, and, and I have to say, we didn't expect to go beyond that. Uh, and to go beyond that required MHRA approval. So we've now got that for three more cohorts. Uh, cohort five is 250 mg per meter squared uh, up to cohort seven. Now, it's important to say that we, we may not need all of those cohorts to reach a maximum tolerated dose. And that, that maximum tolerated dose is really important because it sets the range of dosing. Yeah, okay, understood. All, all future applications, both, both by us, any future partner, any use of AVA 6000, yeah. uh, we then have a, a clear dosing uh, range. And, and the maximum tolerated dose is determined completely objectively based on the adverse events that are observed uh, during the trial. So it's it's not something that we have control over or, or decide. If if we um if we reach the MTD in cohort five or cohort six, then we'll remain on schedule to complete the phase one A in the first half of this year. And to be honest, that's our expectation. Yeah. Um, if if we see a DLT and have to expand a cohort to six patients, or if we go into cohort seven, it could take slightly longer. But um, you know, we don't we can't know that at, at this stage. Um, but you know, we we will be able to start the phase one B uh, in the second half of this uh, of this year, uh, and if we don't reach an MTD, which I think is is very unlikely, uh, by the way, if we don't reach an MTD up to cohort seven, uh, we have the option of then deciding to to stop uh, and define something called a biologically effective dose, uh, okay. at which point that <clears throat> sets the that you know that sets that uh, dosing range. But we we will keep the market updated at the start of each cohort or as soon as we've reached a, an MTD. I mean, those are the only two possible outcomes now. Mm -hmm. um, and just to be clear, no news just means we're getting on with it and we'll update yeah. at the start of a cohort or an MTD. Yeah, well, I mean, I think at, um, was it 250 milligrams at the moment, you're significantly above the sort of like the usual um, allowed level, aren't you, for, um, for sort of like just straight uh, traditional doxorubicin. And well, if you go to if you go yeah. to if you go to levels, if you go to cohort seven, you're going to be an enormous amount of uh, sort of potency or, or dosage level. Exactly. Yeah. And just what about the efficacy? So obviously it's it's been well tolerated by patients. When are we going to start learning a bit more about the sort of the efficacy? You have mentioned obviously it, it's um, 
you know, you actually have from the biopsies seen the um, the doxorubicin um, in the actual tumor. But what about sort of the, the action, the, you know, the, the effectiveness of it? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the the phase one A study is foc- as as all phase one A studies are focused on safety and tolerability, mm. and of course, data such as you know pharmacokinetics and other things yeah. we want to learn about the the behavior of the of the drug in human. Um, now, the phase one A study uh, is taking all all cancer patients that have uh, tumors with a high level of FAP, the enzyme that activates a, a precision drug. Uh, and doxorubicin is uh, most commonly used first line in soft tissue sarcoma. It's not really used and it's not applicable. It's not effective in a broad range of uh, of cancers. So those patients we're taking into phase 1A uh, don't necessarily, and the vast majority, don't have um, tumours that are treatable with doxorubicin. So we wouldn't expect to see efficacy uh, with these patients. But the yeah. phase 1B, the next stage that we get onto, the dose expansion study, that's focused on sarcoma patients. So that that is designed to generate the first efficacy signals because sarcoma patients should respond to um, to doxorubicin. So when we finish the phase 1A, uh, there'll be a short period of maybe a couple of months as we prepare for the phase 1B and gets the sites uh, initiated. Uh, And then, as I said, we'll, we'll begin the phase 1B in the second half of the year. And in that phase 1B, will you be sort of like getting a feeling of the sort of the optimum level of, of dosage for patients, given you've obviously got the maximum one? Yeah, beginning to. So the design of that that, that study and future to the phase two study uh, will have different dosing levels, uh, possibly different dosing um, cycles as well, not, not, not uh, determined yet. But that allows us to then identify... Uh, an optimum dose to take forward uh, for a, you know, for a marketed um, precision doxorubicin ABA 6000. Okay. Uh, and then obviously, you know, doxorubicin has been around for like, what, 40, 50 years, et cetera, as well known um, by sort of medical experts. In terms of its efficacy, it's, I mean, as I just as a layman know that it's one of the most powerful sort of like chemotherapy treatments, you know, around. What sort of level of sort of like, um, you know, demonstrations you need for the efficacy in terms of um, AVA 6000? Uh, it's, it's a good question because I, I know quite a few people assume, well, look, you're releasing doxorubicin in the tumour. Mm. Therefore, it, it must be efficacious, right? Because it's doxorubicin. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and the fact that it's an approved drug um, sh- should give us a high uh, degree of confidence in seeing uh, efficacy. But that that's not good enough from a regulatory right. uh, perspective. You can't assume that. you You have to demonstrate in a human trial the efficacy so uh, so whilst we should absolutely have a, a high degree of confidence because we're releasing a known drug that is efficacious in soft tissue sarcoma um, we have to go through the phase 1b and the phase 2 uh, at least to uh, to get to get approval right okay and then in, just in terms of sort of like if everything went to plan and you got through this phase you know, phase 1b and the phase 2 etc how would the actual AVA 6000 be used sort of like, you know, in, in, in real life by patients? Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's early to be uh, making any sort of firm statements yeah. or decisions around that. But, um, you know, what, what I expect is that uh, one use will be focused on soft tissue sarcoma for obvious reasons. And that that's, a, you know, the, what, what's uh, sort of behind our design of the phase 1B uh, and phase 2. Um, and the... You know, the clinical objective with soft tissue sarcoma, I expect will be to increase the number of cycles that a patient can receive because right. of reduced systemic exposure, rather than trying to dose at a, you know, a much higher level for the same number of cycles. And 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 then what, what I hope patients will then experience is a much better quality of life because uh, we're not seeing any of the very significant side effects that uh, Dr. Rubison has with AVA 6000. So hopefully the use will be a, a larger number of cycles with uh, with obviously a much uh, a much improved uh, patient experience. But I say it's it's very early to be making any firm statements about that. Yeah, well, I guess if you, if, that, if that was the case, then it would increase the size of the market, which is already a, a sort of like a billion dollar sort of year for, for market. Because if you've increased the sort of like the longevity that a patient can actually utilize it, and it's, and it's you know more tolerable, then just by doing the maths, you'd expect this, the market size to increase. 
Yeah, no, I yeah. agree. And we will we'll find an opportunity sometime in the near future to um, set out the the likely path and timeline to approval for AVA six thousand. So yeah, okay, uh, just just to help people understand what that pathway looks like. Brilliant. Okay, well, just switching gears on that precision platform, and can you just a quick update on AVA three nine nine six, which was your second sort of league candidate. Yeah, of course. Cool. So uh, I'm going to give more detail um, when I speak about the AACR poster. This is a poster mm. um, uh, covering the preclinical data for AVA three nine nine six, and I'll, I'll do that in a couple of weeks when it's um, when it's been uh, shown at the uh, AACR meeting, April the seventeenth, I think. So uh, is that in Florida? Yeah, that's the Florida is, one. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So AVA three nine nine six is um, it's a precision modified proteasome inhibitor so proteasome inhibitor um in, in straightforward terms blocks certain cellular processes that get mm. rid of the protein waste in cells so if you like it's the, the the proteasome is the garbage disposal system in cells that cleans up um uh, protein waste and if you stop the proteasome from working then that leads to uh, cell death Mm. So, so something that inhibits the proteasome, inhibits the garbage disposal right. system, is going to kill most cells. Yeah. Uh, and therefore, proteasome inhibitors, of which I think there's three um, approved, have never been successfully used to treat solid tumours because you can't get enough into the tumour without harming or killing the patient. So proteasome inhibitors are only really approved for uh, multiple myeloma, which is type of blood cancer, where you, you can get the exposure in the blood. Um, you can get the exposure to the tumor in, in the blood to have um, a therapeutic effect, but you can't get enough into solid tumors. So that's that's why they've never been oh, used in see, solid right. tumors. Yeah. Gotcha. So that the market is, it is still significant. Um, it's around 2.3 billion, expected to grow to sort of 2.3 billion uh, in a few years' time. Uh, and what we've done is we've designed AVA 3996 in the same way as 6000 to reduce the systemic toxicities by um, targeting the release of the proteasome inhibitor, the actual chemotherapy in the FAP rich tumor tissues. Uh, and that hopefully will mean that 3996 can be used to treat solid tumors. And it would be the first proteasome inhibitor that could be used to treat um, solid tumors. So the bottom line is that a proteasome inhibitor kills most cells mm. effectively. And if we can get enough into solid tumors, um, th then there's a potential for a, you know, quite a broad spectrum, maybe even a tumor agnostic uh, therapy. So there's a long, there's a long way to go, uh, but the preclinical data, which we'll show um, on the AACR poster is, you know, is encouraging, certainly encouraging. Yeah. So, so essentially the, so the AVA uh, 3996 effectively the kill is going to kill the tumor and the doxorubicin is going to stop any sort of spreading, isn't it? It's not stop any sort of further growth in, in but it has a similar sort of effect. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Great. Okay. Well, well, thanks very much, um, Alistair, for your time. Terrific news on the AVA uh, 6000 and um, looking forward to hearing more about uh, the AVA uh, 3996 as well and the um, integration of uh, Lord. In fact, <laughs> we said you've got, you, you, a lot's been happening recently. We've got a lot going forward as well. As well. So uh, thanks very much, Alistair. That's brilliant. Thanks, Paul. Cheers.